What you're seeing pictures and videos of is the art project slash person known as Black Alien Project. The brainchild of French bodybuilder Anthony Lafredo, he spent the last six years amassing nearly 350,000 followers and transforming his body into an alien. Look, artistic freedom, feeling comfortable in your own skin, these are both ideals that I agree with and believe in, but what happens when these are taken too far? The 31-year-old had started with more tame body modifications, like splitting his tongue and getting dermal implants in his skull. After that, he stepped it up with even more extreme and irreversible procedures, including tattooing his entire head black, removing his ears, removing his nose, removing his lip, which led to him having difficulty speaking, and even injecting ink into his eyeballs. And the most surprising part is he claims he's only 23% of the way through his transformation. What does 100% look like? And when does it become too much? Let's try to figure it out while we dive deep down the rabbit hole that is the Black Alien Project. Anthony started his journey to become the Black Alien Project in his early years. He said, since I was little, I've been passionate about the mutations and transformations of the human body. And from the young age of 10 years old, he'd watch bodybuilders transform their bodies online. And more than the bodybuilding itself, it was these transformations of the human body that would grab Anthony's focus. In his before pictures, he looks like any random bro you'd see in a nightclub. And honestly, not too unlike the kind of guys I've seen in LA trying to make it as a model or an actor. He has one of those faces. He could have been the protagonist on Burn Notice for six seasons, and I, I, I wouldn't even know. Oh, god damn it, I made Andrew Schultz again. But alas, he was unfulfilled living the life of a hot French dude, and said, It clicked when I was a security guard. I realized that I was not living my life the way I wanted to. I quit everything when I was 24. And to a certain point, I get where he's coming from. He felt like he was wasting his life, stuck in a dead-end security job with nothing on the horizon, no hope in the future, and then a vision of a flossy-looking alien daddy with a nose built for doing cocaine. When I look at the Black Alien Project, the thing I think about is how he's committed to this for life. He's effectively killed Anthony Lafredo, as he can only be Black Alien Project. There's no more going out for a drink, there's no more, oh, let, let me pick up the kids from daycare, honey. There is only Black Alien Project, and I haven't even revealed how far he's shown us he's intended to go, as just a few days ago, he posted this. Yes, it appears he intends to cut off half of his hands. Now, body modification is one thing, and I think as a coping mechanism or as a form of expression, it's cool. It's whatever, you know, it's not for me. I'm glad you like it. It ain't for me, but I'm glad you do it. However, removing massive parts of your hands for no reason other than aesthetic value? I, I, I mean, uh, for, for rhythm purposes, I should have a joke here, but I, I don't even. I don't know what to say. We're still under 30% for his transformation, even with the hands. So it's 30%? Is that what you're saying? Now, I'm not a disabled person, but isn't this offensive to you if you are? Like, if you're born this way and this guy cosplays like you to be a trippy space daddy, doesn't that, isn't that bad? That, it feels sweaty. It feels at least a little sweaty. So sweaty. But let's talk more about Anthony. Now, he claims a big part of this project is how people will or will not view him as human anymore claims that he goes around conducting, quote, experiments to see how people react to him. He said, in general, they end up leaving me alone. I love really getting into the shoes of a scary character. I often settle down somewhere and play a role, especially at night in the dark streets. He has fun. I explore the contrast between the role I play and myself. <laughs> Uh, you're a grown man. That's weird. Hey, hot take. I don't I don't even look like an alien and it, it would be weird if I did that. <laughs> he said, do they still see a human or something else? That is what is exciting and fascinating. And that's the thing you kind of forget after looking at a bunch of these photos of him that fuck man, there's a person underneath all of that and the person under that claims to be happier than ever. I don't know if you'll believe me. 
but I promise you it's true. Since I started my project, I'm the happiest in the world. I urge no one to do the same, of course. At least he's not encouraging others to do this, as not everything has gone super smoothly. In fact, he said in a Facebook or Instagram live stream, it's hard to tell, they didn't get saved, that after his lip surgery, he's had trouble speaking. In fact, he couldn't even get his nose operation done in his home country of France since such body modifications are made illegal. He instead had to travel to Spain and he still can't say where or who did the procedure. That means it was a van, right? Like just a, just a windowless van in Spain. And while he might not be telling everybody to transform into a black alien, he has no problem selling ad space on his Instagram story for weird doctors on Instagram. I mean, who is this guy? What the heck? Dr. Apo? You're a doctor who advertises in Instagram stories? What? I was gonna say I don't like seeing my doctor getting drunk at a concert, but fuck, he is kinda hot, huh? But the point stands that we probably shouldn't be telling people to get chin jobs through Instagram ads. But I digress. You might be wondering, how can Anthony afford to do all of these procedures, all of this tattoo work, all of these surgeries? It has to be expensive. He said he spent between 25 and 30,000 euros on the project thus far. So where's he getting the money? Well, from what I can tell... Say the line, Bart! He's unemployed. Yeah! And while it appears he may have worked at a French haunted house, which might be his like Lilo and Stitch one true place he belongs, and at some point was working as a club bouncer, which imagine getting kicked out of a nightclub by the orc from that Will Smith movie. But his main plan was to become a body modder, specializing in injecting ink into the eyes. Quote, we open the eye, take the needle, prick the cornea, the ink is injected and stays for life. Stop it. Stop Stop this madness. The all-black eyeball has actually become popular in recent years, with notable examples being Italian model Christian Ombra and Polish rapper slash MMA fighter Popek. Which, yep, this, this guy is definitely a Polish rapper slash MMA fighter. Yeah. That checks out. Back to the Black Alien Project. Now, you might be saying, as a performance piece, as a living, breathing work of art, doesn't this have some merit? As an artistic statement, I, I guess it's trying to say he's never fit in, that he's he's always felt like an alien. I, that that interpretation might be a bit on the nose, not, not that he has... Never mind. Now, a lot of Black Aliens mods have actually been performed by a guy named Oscar Body Mod. Oscar and Black Alien started as a simple professional relationship, but over time they became close friends. They lived together, made videos together, worked out together. This dude who made a video series about it in Spanish called it a bromance, and shout out to Isaac from my Discord server for translating these videos for me. Basically, Oscar brought Black Alien into his home and gave him a place to live. But it seems like a bunch of beef started between the two because Oscar had some house rules that he expected to be followed and Black Alien didn't. Hey, uh, Black Alien, did you, uh, d did you excrete eggs on the toilet seat again? <laughs> well, it's, it's just, we, we talked about this before and I was sort of hoping after that we might. I just feel like I cleaned it up the last couple times. Uh, okay, good talk. Another one of the claims that Oscar is making is that Black Alien hasn't paid Oscar for some of the body mods, which might explain how he's gotten so much work done while being unemployed. It looks like from their online relationship that before their falling out, Oscar was almost just as big of a part of the Black Alien project as Black Alien himself. It's wild how after you look at Black Alien Project for a long time, Oscar actually looks super normal by comparison. It even appears there's some teaser trailer footage of a supposed documentary being made about him. I mean, when they were friends, Black Alien in his own caption said that he owes a lot of this project to Oscar. He wrote, Now I can walk with my head held high, thanks to you. I'm proud of what we did together. And he tagged Oscar. And while he might say for others not to follow in his footsteps, that doesn't mean he's alone. This is Black Alien Project 2, seemingly the mortal enemy of Black Alien Project. Black Alien 2 is a steel-toothed Nega version of Black Alien. Hailing from the deepest, darkest parts of the cosmos, fans of both have created a ton of fan art pitting them against one another, with Black Alien having an army of cats for 
some reason. An alien reason. And Black Alien 2 having an army of zombie children. I will say there's something much scarier about Black Alien 2. While, while Black Alien has this level of, of wonder, like he might, you know, befriend you or be the last of his kind or something, this one is just scary and he keeps making this breathing sound that's really creepy. Drop off. Fucking stop it. Honestly, some of this art is pretty bitchin' though, and the name of their feud, Battle for the Cosmos, is pretty awesome. However, while it appears that Black Alien wants nothing to do with Black Alien 2, Oscar Body Mod might actually be the one who's really behind this guy. But even if he has to do the rest of this alone, it doesn't look like he's intending to stop at any point soon. He said recently that his dream is to have his skin removed entirely and replaced with metal if possible. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> he listed his arms, his legs, along with the back of his head as the next parts of his body he wants to have modified. And he certainly has plenty of fans and supporters, creating tons of fan art featuring his design. And his fans will be like, yes, King, get it, express yourself, King, which I'm, again, all for expressing yourself and positive transformation and stuff, but like, ho homeboy's cutting off his nose and half of his hands. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been insecure about our appearance. I know I have, and I think almost anybody could rattle off a list of things they find unappealing about themselves, but everyone should get the opportunity to feel comfortable in their own skin. You know, I think sometimes the people you wouldn't expect to be insecure end up having the biggest insecurities out of anybody. I think about that a lot, how bodybuilders are probably the most insecure people you've ever met, because think about the limits they're willing to push their bodies to to feel good about themselves. I'm just saying, a person like Hulk Hogan doesn't look like Hulk Hogan because he's secure with himself, uh, regardless. If he's happy, I suppose it's really none of our business, although he did say in an interview that his head implants actively give him pain every day, which I can't imagine living with that and being happy, but whatever. Although his mother and family didn't approve of his transformation at the beginning, they've apparently warmed up to it. An alien! My very own alien! <laughs> And I do think some of the discrimination he's faced because of his transformation and his general look is fucked up. Like he said he wasn't even allowed to eat at some restaurants because the owners have kicked him out and stuff. And that's super messed up. Overall, it'll be interesting to see where the project goes or how close he can get to 100%. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel build right now while the channel is still super, super small. If you really like the video, jump over onto the Discord server and let's talk about it. And if you really, really like the video, please consider supporting me on Patreon, along with these incredible people. Pantsless Lizard, Avery H, Frosted Mint, William Nelson, Johnny Lasagna, John Mapley, Diego CW, Diana Nock, Christopher Kunst, Brenna Folger, Hilary O'Neill, Isaac Marin, Marty Schindler, Jake Clark, and Kevin Krebs. They're all they're all poet laureates, and they're all spelling beach champions, and they're all strong warriors that I will one day call to battle. So definitely a, a huge thank you to all of those people who, who really make these videos possible. So thank you guys all so much for watching.